All right, welcome back. This is gonna be a quick kind of like gear after action review and a little bit discussion about the no fail pistol course from Press Jack Consulting. That's with Chuck Pressburg. I'm gonna talk through my gear, what worked well, uh, what didn't, things I might do differently next time, and then kind of like through the conversation, we'll talk about the course a little bit. So uh, overall, I fired 700 rounds in the course. I fired 380 on day one, and then of course 320 on day two. You'll start out shooting uh, freestyle, so two hands on the pistol, and you'll wrap up day one shooting strong hand only, and then day two, you'll work into some weak hand only and do some more performance stuff. Uh, overall, you know, the course is like a shooting maturity decision-making thing. It's not, you know, how to shoot a handgun 101. So there's a bunch of good reviews about it. Look into those, kind of figure out if it's what you think you need or not. You probably do need it um, and make that decision for yourself. But if you're like, hey, I don't know how to draw, like this is not the course that's gonna teach you how to draw. Okay, so the belt, hey, this thing worked great. You know, no issues, everything was awesome. One thing I wanna note that I didn't discuss in the first video is I have this pad from Core Performance on the inside of my UBL. Uh, and this thing is awesome. I never had a hot spot or anything on my leg. I really think this pad does a great job. So everything here worked well. Uh, kind of go through some of the pieces in the first video, but really that pad, uh, really, really good thing to have. I had no problem having enough ammo on that belt. Uh, I had no problem you know, using my ammo can kind of to carry on stuff to the line. And I definitely used that dump pouch for all my uh, miscellaneous items I needed. Speaking of which, uh, this chalk, you know what? It's actually doing a little bit better than I thought it was. Um, shocker, you gotta give it 45 seconds to dry. If I do that, you know, it doesn't come off as easily uh, as if I just kind of rush it. I was really only putting this on my shooting hand so that my support hand wouldn't kind of lose contact because my hand is all sweaty. And throughout the day, shooting strong hand only, weak hand only, just as I got you know sweatier and sweatier, I would just put like a little dab in my palm and kind of rub it around just to dry out my hand. You know, that pistol has more than enough traction that I don't need to make my hands all super white with chalk. I just need to get a little bit of that sweat dried off. You know, maybe you're sweatier than me and you want more chalk. Hey, you still got that option. Uh, but so far, this is working fine. I was a little concerned that this thing was going to like burst, you know, open up and squeeze out all in my dump pouch. And honestly, that never happened. There was never any risk. I never spilled a bunch of chalk anywhere. So I think if you're looking for chalk, this is probably a decent thing to start out with. I don't know if it's the best. I haven't tried them all, but so far it's working okay for me. Uh, my Oakleys were fine. I uh, definitely had to reapply uh, cat crap throughout the day. So if you're pack an iPro, I definitely encourage you keep the anti-fog with the iPro and have at least two, two rags with that. I wore the dark, the grays most of the time because uh, it was just super sunny. One thing I was not super thrilled with was my uh, ear pro. So these Walker silencers, you know, the sound is fine. I like the app, the Bluetooth, which is great. But dang, like wearing this all day, uh, not the most comfortable. So I gotta play around with these different sized items. You know, I have the smallest kind of inner piece and the smallest you know, in the ear piece, and they still kind of hurt at the end of the day. So I might buy someone else's um, plugs and retrofit them onto this just to see if I can get them to fit. Because everything electronic in this works well, but you know, I think maybe I just have small ears and at the end of the day, my ears hurt and I don't want my ears to hurt at the end of the day. Okay, everything here, good. We'll move on to kind of like the actual shooting gear uh, and the ammo. So I shot this Speeder Lawman. This is their 45 ACP 230 grain. I was super, super satisfied with this. Uh, it shot just as accurately as I could. And what I thought was really interesting about it is that I had two lots that I, you know, one that I bought, I don't know how many years ago, and another thousand rounds that I bought that was like police trade-in recently. So 
you know, hypothetically, yeah, like maybe they were both produced separately and, you know, X years later now they came back together. But I think that's probably less likely than these are two separate lots. And I saw no difference uh, in any accuracy between the ammo. Like no clicks were made between day one and day two, like nothing like that whatsoever. So Spear Lawman, hey, it's super consistent, you know, over years of the same load. So very happy with it. Again, 700 rounds, not a single ammunition related problem like whatsoever, which is not what I can say for some other ammo, which I'll get you an example of right now. So I have some ammo here that is the Reman from Defender. And basically the crimp here is not as tight as it needs to be. So as soon as it hits the feed ramp, at a less than ideal angle, that bullet gets set back and now you have a malfunction. With Lawman, because that crimp holding the bullet in the case is tight enough, it just smashes right through and there's no issue. And if there is an issue, the bullet pops out and it doesn't look like this, right? It's still the right length. So that's kind of like the difference there between you know, 25 cent 45 and 30 cent 45 or 30 and 35, whatever the price is now. So. I'm very happy with the Spear Lawman, the Defender Reman stuff. Uh, it did not meet my expectation for what I would have wanted to see, you know, from like a reputable U.S. company. On that note, let's talk about magazines. So I only had one malfunction related to a magazine, and that was with this one. You know, of course, it was during uh, a strong hand only drill, and you know, I shot. I looked down. The slide was open. And the bolt was just kind of like down, not being fed uh, into the chamber. So this magazine, it's a Chimacorp Power Mag. Uh, I don't think that this is a bad model of magazine. I'll tell you, you know, how many rounds are through this magazine? How old is this magazine? You know, are aliens real? These are all questions that I can't answer. But I definitely know this mag has been around a lot. It's fired a lot of rounds. So it's probably time to either put a new spring in fix the follower, something with this mag, or just get a new magazine. The 10 round mags, they all worked as expected. You know, I put brand new springs in them and they're putting a lot of force up on the magazine. So when you go to load this pistol and you're at 10 rounds and you drop that slide, 99 times out of 100, it's fine. That one other time, there's just so much pressure going up there that it's a little bit sluggish feeding. So if I was to say anything, I would maybe take just a little bit of power out of the magazine spring to increase reliability in the 10 round mag. I don't need it to be at you know 100% spring pressure. I just need to make sure that the nose of the bullet is in the right orientation. So you know if this, if this Wilson 47T spring at 10 rounds full compression, if it's putting, putting 50 pounds of pressure up, you know, arbitrary number 50 pounds up I need like 48 or 46 I need just to go down a little bit uh, instead of being you know super aggro power now the Vickers mags also by Wilson combat these ones no problems ever like they're super reliable you can do a plus one with them all day long and these are like the best mags ever so if you need an eight round mag if you need a nice level mag that's gonna work every time just get the the Vickers mags from Wilson don't bother messing around 10 round mags. Like I like them, obviously I have like 20 of them right here, but those Vickers eight round mags are just like a one and done solution. They're as close to a Glock mag as you're ever gonna get in a 1911. So this pistol, uh, the Pub Arms Operator in 45, shot great the whole time, super happy with it. Uh, it's still you know oily and dirty from day two. I did wipe it off a little bit just so I'm not getting black stuff all over me. Uh, everything worked totally fine, like nothing to say about it, right? Boringly reliable, boringly accurate. I did clean it between day one and day two, and all I did was take the slide off, wipe down some stuff, put the bork snake through the barrel, and relubricate the pistol. So I would not say that this thing was maintenance heavy. I honestly probably would have done the exact same uh, cleaning cycle with this gun to you know, say, say a Glock between day one and day two. Like you fire 400, 500 rounds, you're there for a shooting course, you can take 10 minutes to just take the slide off, wipe some stuff down, 
pull a bore snake through once and add lubricant to the pistol. So this is, this is great. I'm happy with it. I'm at just under 10,000 rounds right now. Uh, so I don't know what I'm going to do at 10,000. I might send it in to get looked at or measured. Who knows? Uh, hit me up in the comments, as they say. Tell me what I should do with this at 10,000 rounds. But very, very happy with this gun. You know, the finish wear is really not super significant. You know, you got some high points and stuff. But it's a parkerized duty style 1911. So it probably should look the way it looks right now. You know, in conclusion, I think everything I said in the first video about gear kind of panned out well. Uh, bring water, bring food, bring a chair, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Bring a pistol that works and you're going to do fine. If you're nervous about the course, you think maybe you're not good enough, trust me, there's someone in, that, in this course who is worse than you, not just in mine, but in the pantheon of this entire course's existence. There's been a worse shooter. Just go take it. You're going to learn something. You're going to have a good time with some other good shooters. And you're going to learn something about you know, your level of shooting ability uh, and what you got to work on. All right, guys, any questions about this, please let me know. And I'll try and hit up all your answers in the comments. Thanks.